So Matt, let's let's first start with what exactly a job guarantee is, because we uh, certainly in the past uh, month or so or two, uh, we have heard a lot more about uh, a a job guarantee from uh, Democratic politicians and maybe potential, I guess, potential, potential presidential candidates. So so uh, lay it out for us. What what is exactly a job guarantee? Yeah, so there are different visions of the job guarantee now circulating. Uh, the what I would call the the OGJG was a proposal to have the government set a minimum wage uh, wherever it happens to be seven dollars, eight dollars, depending on the year that the proposal was being written, and say that anyone can come in and get a job at that wage. And the idea is that everyone who is unemployed will be able to go get work. So it's called an employer of last resort, because if you can't find a job elsewhere in the market, you have this job, a minimum wage job that the government will provide to you. The variants on this idea have kind of multiplied as it has gained traction. So there are people who now promote something they call the job guarantee, which um, does not rely upon this minimum wage uh, structure, um, but has a whole scale of wages that are paid based on the skill of the worker. uh, The Center for American Progress has a couple of proposals now out for job guarantee that are really mostly just old plans that they've had for child care and stuff like that, things that are good, that they're just calling a job guarantee. So it's rapidly starting to get muddled because, you know, it's a popular concept. Um, but the, the original idea is the government will be an open-ended employer at the minimum wage to anyone who needs a job. And so in that in that uh, OG, uh, and uh, we should just say that is the sort of the original, um, uh, the uh, original version of this plan. Um, wh- how is that administered? I mean, so is it? And, and we should say this is a um, this this is, I guess, in a form, an economic stabilizer, right? I mean, in the event that more people become unemployed, uh, there's always going to be the government hiring people at minimum wage jobs. And um, how does the government sort of distribute this? How do you create that sort of bureaucracy that's ready at a moment's notice to hire X number of more people or to lose X number of more people? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the main challenges that I don't think has uh, been answered very well. Um, The initial idea of administration is to do it locally, and that's kind of uh, a kind of hand wave over the problem because they'll just say, well, uh, just let local governments and nonprofits handle it, and they'll figure it out. Um, And that solves certain informational problems, such as how do I, a bureaucrat in D.C., know what people need in, you know, rural Kentucky. Um, But it doesn't solve some of the more uh, insurmountable or, I guess, inherent problems, which is how do I find work for people? What if there's not work to do? What if uh, people have skills or don't have skills? Uh, What if the kind of stuff we need in our community doesn't match the workers who are coming in? And what happens in a recession when we need to hire 10 million extra people over the course of a few months and get them employed? Uh, We have to have managers for those people. Where where are the managers going to come from? Uh, You know, you can go on and on. So there are a lot of practical difficulties in administration, both in terms of finding work and in terms of scaling the program up and down based on the state of the economy. And we really have no we have no analog um, for for this. I mean, you know, the one thing that occurs to me is just sort of the problem that that public schools have in in sort of um, anticipating 
uh, trends, and, and this, you know, happened in New York for a while, anticipating trends in terms of how many students are you going to have? Like, you know, I, I can get a sense of how many I'm going to have in two or three years, but 10 years out, maybe there's not that many people who want to stay in the city and have their kids there, or maybe there are people who move out or move to a different, if there's, and in this situation, we're talking about a, the potential for a very volatile number of people who might be interested in these type of work. And, uh, and again, you have this, like you mentioned, all these problems in matching up their skill set with the needs of a locality. How does, and, and then I want to move on to sort of the, uh, the, the, the political, um, I guess, uh, you know, return of this idea. But how does that OG plan that you were talking about, how does that compare to uh, the WPA, that, that sort of uh, the uh, during, you know, coming out of the Depression or in the Depression, uh, the, the government hiring uh, as a way of dealing with the massive unemployment? I mean, how does that compare? Right. So I would distinguish, um, you know, uh, label wise by saying the WPA is a conventional public works project. So the idea of the WPA was we do need to hire a lot of people. So what we're going to do is we're going to find stuff that needs to be done, and then we're going to hire people who can do that stuff. Um, So that's different from an open-ended job guarantee where anyone who comes through the door, we're going to try to find something for you to do. Um, And that makes the planning a lot easier because you can say, uh, well, we have a lot of unemployed people. Why don't we build uh, a new school or something? And then you can go out and you can hire people who, you know, used to be construction workers or whatever. You can hire people through normal processes. And that will bring a lot of people in. A lot of people will become employed through that process. So there's a difference between, I guess you would say, identifying a specific output that you want to create, whether that's a school or a bridge or a service, and then finding workers who can produce that output versus taking sort of random workers and trying to figure out some output that they could possibly do. That the so, second task is more the JG approach, whereas the first is more the WPA approach, and the first is a much more uh, doable uh, kind of thing. One is sort of pull, and the other one, I guess, is push in some respects. Um, and so we, is there do we have any example in uh, U.S. history? And if not in U.S. history, uh, do we have any example um, internationally of a job guarantee that has uh, that has worked or maybe that hasn't worked? Yeah, so uh, we don't have anything that I know of anywhere in the world that would be a job guarantee. And the advocates are very clear about this, um, partially because there are a lot of things in the world that seem somewhat similar to a job guarantee, but those projects, those programs have all had um, issues that job guarantee people don't want to, uh, you know, uh, say are issues that they're going to have to face. So, for example, uh, in the 1990s and 2000s, we had the welfare reform under Clinton, and as part of that, the a lot of cities, New York City in particular, created work fair where people who were on um, AFDC or what became TANF were given a public job, uh, often to pick up trash or fill up soap dispensers or things that weren't, you know, too glamorous, but things that sort of anyone could do. And so we've had that, and those programs have not been... People don't like them for the most part. The left has, has viewed those as, as being kind of failures. They don't tend to really help people get into better work. And the people on the jobs don't seem to like them. Um, so we've seen work fair programs throughout the world. And um, those are, I think, the closest to a job guarantee. But never seen it outright, open-ended, we'll hire anyone you know, who comes. All right. Well, Matt, look, let, let's take a break here. And when we come back, I want to talk about the, um, the, the, the rise in a job guarantees political popularity, at least by measured uh, by the sort of rush to uh, present a plan by m- multiple 
politicians in the Democratic Party who I think are are trying to court the left in anticipation of a run in 2020. And then I want to talk about uh, a little bit uh, more about those uh, uh, policy limitations and what might be a better alternative. Are we going to take a quick break? I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio. I'm talking to Matt Brunig, uh, who has uh, both written in uh, Jacobin Magazine, Just What is a Job Guarantee? We'll be right back after this. 